Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Salatu wassalam ala Rasulullah Salatu wassalam A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki yawmuddin Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustakim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alihim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم we thank Allah profusely that he has given us the tawfiq to gather today as in every other Sunday for the last about two and a half years. Today we'll be talking about the as first part in this series on practices of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his everyday life, in his daily life. I wanted to actually talk about how he entered home and how he left, exited his home. But then I thought that I should try to drive across the paramount importance of sunnah in the lives of Muslims. The important position that his way of doing things should hold in our life. I call it paramount importance. During Ramadan, we talked about Ramadan. And after that, we spent two halakas on Allah's protection after Ramadan. Some reminders on what we should be doing so that we are protected after Ramadan. And then I spent one halakha, we spent one halakha on virtues of reciting and understanding the Holy Quran. And then two halakas on virtues of remembering Allah, zikr of Allah. And then I thought about, and these all actually came one after another in my thought that after this, this should follow and so on. So after we talked about virtues of remembering Allah, I thought of empowering ourselves on essential duas from the traditions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it took us six halakas on that. And then the natural follow-up to that was essential duas from the Holy Quran. And we spent three halakas on that. And then comes today's halakha. And as part of remembering Allah, I mentioned about how much we should remember Allah. And then I also mentioned that every of Allah's creation, animate, living, or inanimate, those that we consider do not have life or lives, they also remember Allah. As mentioned in this verse, it, it doesn't say that they remember Allah. It says something more than that. Surah Al-Hajj, Verse number 18, Allah Ta'ala says, and the near meaning is, do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth? And if we do not know, then it would be, ama it would be amazing for us to know that he mentions, and the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the moving creatures, and many of the people meaning those people who prostrate before him. 
people have an option to prostrate or not to prostrate. And then he continues, but upon many, the punishment has been justified. Those who do not prostrate, there'll be punishment. That's the implication. And he whom Allah humiliates, punishes. For him, there is no bestower of honor. Nobody can help him. Indeed, Allah does what he wills. And, and to simply give some image to each of to, to most of these terms, because an image speaks a thousand words. I um, will show you some images. So he mentions about the art, and, and, and we see the art in manifold forms and beauty, captivating, attractive, and so on and so forth. Takes us away from the remembrance of Allah. And the sun, the moon, and there are so many different uh, colors of the moon and shapes and sizes of the moon, the strawberry moon, and uh, the full blue moon. I'm not going into the details of each one of them. The stars, he mentions the stars, he mentions the mountains. The, the, the so-called majestic mountains, the trees, beautiful trees, and so many trees in the world, and so many leaves, all different. And uh, scientists have found that trees talk to each other and rec recognize their offspring. So if they can talk to each other, they can as well make remembrance of, of the, their creator. And then Allah Ta'ala continues. I couldn't put picture of a moving creature or the moving creatures. And many of the people. And the full verse once again is, do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is, is on, in the heavens and whoever is on the earth and the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the moving creatures and many of the people. And all these all this creation of Allah Ta'ala is unified at least in, in one way, and that is in their glorification of the Creator. It is the common thread that binds all creation. The worship of the Creator. And we don't see how they worship, but they worship in their own manner. And Allah also mentions inanimate objects like the moon is inanimate, the stars are inanimate. He also mentions in other words, pebbles, for example, rocks that, uh, that uh, uh, glorify Allah. And in one tradition of Rasulullah wasallam, it is mentioned that remember the name of Allah, make zikr of Allah abundantly before every object that you come across before every rock before every tree so that there is more and more witness for you on the day of judgment. We may feel that these rocks and pebbles and these trees do not understand anything. There will be witnesses for us on the day of judgment if we remember Allah before them. Men and jinn are granted option. All of the creation, they do not have the option but to worship Allah in their own way. So with that introduction, I talk about the paramount importance of the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi I wanted to talk today about how he, as I mentioned in the beginning, how he entered home, how he exited home, and about the, his manner of sleeping. But then I changed that yesterday, sometime yesterday. I thought, no, I should firstly talk about and completely about it might take, it will take actually the whole of the session, the paramount importance of the sunnah of Rasulullah from, from hadith, from traditions, and from the verses of the Quran. Now, what is Islam? Islam is the way of life brought, shown, exemplified by Rasulullah sallallahu That is Islam. Whatever he exemplified. 
in terms of the obligatory acts he performed, in terms of the wajibat, which is close to uh, the, the fard, in terms of uh, the sunnah that we classify as sunnah. And by the way, there are two types of sunnah. One is a sunnah that he uh, did uh, without fail. He acted upon without fail. For example, to the two rakat uh, before the fajr prayer, he, he performed that without fail. So that is called sunnate muakkida. If we do not perform those sunnah, we will be sinful. And then there is sunnate ghair muakkida. If we do not act on those, then we will not get reward. We will not get sin. The four rakat before asr, he performed sometimes, he did not perform sometimes before the Asar prayer, four rakat. If we perform, we'll get reward. If we don't, we will not get sin. He performs sometimes. So we should perform sometimes. Not that we never in our life perform uh, the four rakat before uh, Asar. And then uh, he, he performed Nawafil acts. And that is up to us how much we want to perform. We will get reward. If we don't, we will, we will not get reward. We will not get sin. Now, what is Sunnah? Sunnah includes not only his worship of Allah, but it also includes whatever he said or acted upon or encouraged us, or he did not do, but he saw others doing, he did not discourage. Includes what he did and how he conducted himself in his 24 hour life. Includes how he entered and left home, how he slept. These are the two I wanted to talk about today. And in the next session, I wanted to talk about how he ate, drank, conducted with people, his conjugal life. So everything gets moved forward. All aspects of his life are preserved in great and verified detail for our benefit to act upon. Point number two. Worship of Allah. In Surah Ad-Dariyat, there's a typo here. Surah Ad-Dariyat, verse number 56, Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّي وَالْإِنسِ إِنسَ إِلَّا الْيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create jinn and humans except to worship me. I did not create jinn and humans except to worship me. In other words, Allah created jinn and men for his worship. It does not necessarily automatically imply that we worship 24 hours. That's not possible for us. We have to take care of our needs. If he would have created us for worshiping 24 hours, then he would have created us like angels who have no needs. So they can worship 24 hours. We have to take care of our needs. Now, the time that we spend to take care of our needs, to earn, to take care of our needs, and so on and so forth. If we, perf if we act in the manner shown by Rasulullah then that will become worship for us. In Surah Al-Imran, verse number 191, Allah Ta'ala says the near meaning, those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and lying down on their sides. And these are the three positions of human beings. They're either standing or sitting or laying down. And then he mentions more than that and think deeply about the creation of heavens and the earth as they stand and sit and lay down. It's not possible for us to remember Allah continuously. Us meaning us. There are people who, have, who did that, but you know we are worldly. We are worldly uh, uh, beings. Far from those people who remembered Allah, or today, I'm sure there are people who remember Allah. Twenty-four hours. And Ibn Kathir said, 
that these people remember Allah in all situations, in their heart and speech. Point number three. So what is the way out for us, for worldly people like us? Dunya dar. We have to train ourselves to follow the everyday sunnah of Rasulullah Then we will be in worship 24 hours. In our everyday activities, in fulfilling our needs, in doing our uh, jo job, or studying, or shopping, or uh, taking care of the family, cooking, etc. We try to remember Allah as much as possible, but we also carry out those acts in the manner shown by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and with the duas, with the duas, prayers that he recited. And then the acts of our daily life can become worship. Implying, if we take into account that we perform every act as per seeing if Allah's command is there, what is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And with intention of pleasing Allah ta'ala. And obviously, iman is a precondition. Commandment of Allah, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa purity of intention and iman. Then all acts, if done, keeping these four points in mind, can become worship. And therein lies the importance of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa it imparts to our 24-hour life the status of continual worship. We will be in continual worship. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever adheres to my sunnah when my ummah is corrupt will have the reward of a martyr. Will have the reward of a martyr. Now, some, some there are scholars who have found a weakness in this hadith. In the chain of narration, one of the narrators was not as reliable as he should have been. So this, this is a weak hadith, in other words, according to some scholars, though I have heard scholars uh, mentioning this, this hadith. Uh, let's say it is a weak, weak uh, uh, narration. I will bypass this one. I will uh, put forward before you a similar hadith. This is from Abu Daud. A similar hadith, but not as detailed. But giving the gist of this hadith in that one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, ahead of you, there lies days of patience during which being patient will be like grasping a hot charcoal. And here patience, patience implies iman, holding on to iman. And Iman, as you know, is uh, patience is half of Iman. Holding on to Iman will be like holding hot charcoal in your hand. The one who does good deeds at that time will have a reward like that of 50 men who do such deeds. And if I had read the previous version from Abu Daud, this is from Tirmizi, you would have realized he's talking about our times. Is giving details of the times. So now we have a tremendous opportunity that we act on Faraid, Wajibat, Sunnah, and Nawafil, as he did. We can get the reward of 50 men. And the Sahaba asked, Reward of 50 men during their time, during their time. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in red, the reward of 50 of you, implying the Sahaba, the reward of 50 of you. And this has been classed as Sahih, authentic. You can see the opportunity that is in front of us. The reward of 50 of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In, 
in some reports of the hadith, there are different uh, uh, narrations of the same hadith in different books. In some reports, it says, they are the ones who will revive my sunnah and teach it to the people. Therein goes the paramount importance of sunnah. Revive, they will revive his sunnah, his way of doing things and teach it to the people, not holding to ourselves and, and uh, the authenticity of the, of the narration. Anas ibn Malik reported Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I wish I could meet my brothers. Amazing hadith, this one. Every hadith is amazing. This one to me seems so amazing. He's saying, I wish I could meet my brothers. And the Sahaba asked, asked, are we not your brothers? Are we not your brothers? And he said, you are my companions, my Sahaba. But my brothers are those who have faith in me, although they never saw me. Who have faith in me, though they never saw me. See, the companions, they saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They saw his miracles. They saw Jibreel Alayhi Salam coming in hum human form. And uh, they could recognize this person is not from us. Otherwise, they would have known him. They could recognize white robe, absolutely white. There's no sign of traveling from some other place and black beard and black hair and looking uh, saintly. And then later on, the Surah told them, this was Jibreel who came to teach you. And they saw miracles, so many miracles. So many miracles that we, we, we can spend halakas after halakas on the miracles of Rasulullah. And they brought faith. And many companions who brought faith later did not bring faith earlier. They saw and they saw and they saw. And many brought faith after the conquest of Makkah, most of them. I wish I could meet my brothers, those who will come after me, implying we have another opportunity of getting such an exalted position. <clears throat> Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people who will be nearest to me on the day of resurrection will be those who supplicate Allah more often for me sending salam, durood on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And these will be the ones who will imitate the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa more than others, those who send more durood on him. Amr ibn Shuaib radiallahu anhu narrated Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, those who are most beloved to me and the closest to me in the hereafter are those who have the best akhlaq character amongst you. These are the people that will have the closest seats to me on the day of judgment and in paradise. Now, those who imitate his character, his manners, his dealings, which is very tough, you know. We have a certain predisposition, a certain nature. And to control those urges and to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in our character and conduct is very difficult. And the people who have the best character, they will, meaning, meaning trying to follow the conduct of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his manner of dealing with people, they will be the ones who will follow his sunnah. Because following his sunnah of dressing and keeping the beard and eating in the manner he ate and sleeping in the manner he slept or using the bathroom in the manner he used is much easier than imbibing his conduct and character and manner of 
dealing with people. That is much more tough. So if the people who deal in the manner he dealt conduct themselves in the manner he conducted themselves, they will, they will act on virtually all his sunnah. And I, I read other traditions implying that those who, those who follow him in terms of various other acts, for example, taking care of orphans or worshiping more and various other acts, they are the ones who will be nearest to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of judgment and in Jannah. And then in Surah Al-Azhab, Ahzab, verse number 21, Allah Ta'ala says, Lakat kana lakum fi Rasulillahi uswatun hasana. There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern, example for anyone whose hope is in Allah. I haven't quoted the whole entire verse in Arabic. Uh, whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. So he's, he's the excellent example for us. Surah Al-Kalam, verse number four, Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا خُلُقٍ azim." وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ azim." And indeed, Allah Ta'ala is reassuring us by saying, indeed, you are of a great moral character, worthy of being, uh, worthy of emulating, imitating. The best description of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's character was given by Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was asked by someone who did not see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, the question was, can you tell us about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And Aisha radiallahu anha is reported to have said, Kana khuluku hul Quran. The Quran was his character. The Quran was his character, reported in at least seven or eight uh, books of traditions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had not merely presented the teachings of the Holy Quran before the world, but has also given its practical demonstration by his personal example, by living everything that is in the Quran that he could act upon or what he said in terms of his traditions. So whatever was enjoined in the Quran was acted upon practically by himself in the first instance. And whatever he said, he, if the need arose, he acted on those first and foremost. In Surah Al-Hashad, verse number seven, the near meaning is so, accept whatever the messenger gives you and refrain from whatever he forbids you. Who's saying Allah? He is not saying, except whatever I tell you in the Quran. That is there, obviously. But he also says, he meaning Allah, except whatever the messenger gives you and refrain from whatever he forbids you and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is most stern in punishment. Surah Nisa, verse number 80, Allah Ta'ala says, he who obeys the messenger Messenger has obeyed Allah. In Surah Al Ahzab, I, I, I simply quoted this to show you two things. Number one, the beauty of a verse of the Quran, the beauty of the entire Quran. See the beauty of this verse in terms of the rhyme and the rhythm. In one sentence, the rhyme and rhythm in one sentence. Yusli lakum, ama lakum, wa yagfir lakum, zunubakum, wa mayyuti lil, wa mayyuti lil, laha wa rasuluhu, wa rasuluhu, faqad faza fawzan azima. I wish I could uh, recite in the manner the, the 
a curry would have recited. He will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And then Allah says, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has truly achieved a great triumph. Surah Nisa, once again, verse number 69, and whoever obeys Allah and the messenger will be in the company of those blessed by Allah, the prophets, the people of truth, the martyrs, and the righteous. What honorable company. So what opportunity we have by following Allah and his messenger, we can be in the company of the most blessed people. And here it mentions uh, even the prophets. And then in again, Surah Nisa verse 115, and whoever defies, opposes the messenger after guidance has become clear to them and follows a path other than that of the believers, we will let them pursue what they have chosen. So the option is there. We can disobey. Then burn them in hell. In, in one narration it says, then roast them in hell. What an evil end. Surah An nisa again, verse number 14. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger and transgresses his limits, he will cast him into the fire. Once again, the similar expression, to abide therein, and he shall have a disgraceful torment. Surah Al Imran, verse number 31. O messenger, tell people, if you indeed love Allah, follow me. Follow me. Allah Ta'ala is not simply implying, follow me as long as I obey only the Quran. Follow me in all my acts. That is implied here very clearly. Follow me and Allah will love you and will forgive your sins. <clears throat> Allah is all forgiving, all compassionate. Uh, Imam Bukhari is reported to have see, seen a dream in his early years in which he sees that he is uh, in the desert on a sandy patch and he sees footsteps and those are footsteps of Rasulullah on the sand and he's trying to put his feet on each of the footsteps of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there are other uh, very famous scholars who have seen similar dreams. Walking in the footsteps of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is what is implied in following the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, in Surah Najm, verse number three, Allah Ta'ala says, nor does he speak out of his desire, implying Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that whatever he says is divinely inspired. And in a tradition of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, uh, I mean, from Ras Abdullah ibn Amr that we get tradition of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, uh, I used to write down everything I heard from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to memorize it, whatever he said, so I could memorize. The Quraysh prohibited me saying, do you write down everything that you hear from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? They did not say Rasulullah, obviously. They, the Quraysh hadn't become Muslims by this time. While he is a human being who speaks in anger sometimes and pleasure sometimes, you know, so why do you write down everything he says? Abdullah bin Amr bin As said, so I stopped writing and talked to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about that. Thereupon he pointed his finger to his mouth and said, write down or by the one in whose hand my soul is, nothing comes out of it except the truth. Nothing comes out of it except the truth. Again, implying inspired by Allah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have left for you. I have left you with two matters which will never lead you astray. And by the way, these are near translations, near meanings, which will never lead you astray as long as you hold to them, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his Rasul 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to hold on to both. Hold on to both. That means don't leave, don't hold partially, hold stringently. Enter Islam wholeheartedly. And we cannot enter Islam wholeheartedly without following the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We wouldn't know how to pray without following his Sunnah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the worlds. I have highlighted two words. Is a mercy? How is he a mercy? Just by transmitting the Quran? No. By living in a certain manner as inspired by Allah Ta'ala. And the other word I have highlighted is worlds implying not this, just this earth is a mercy for the whole, whole, whole universe. And Allah knows best what else it means. <clears throat> In Surah Al-Ahzab again, verse number 56, what a what a what an honor Allah Ta'ala is conferring on him. Indeed, Allah and his angels confer blessings upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Send salawat. You saluna ala nabi, send salawat upon the messenger. Oh, you who have believed, he's asking us also, gone for Allah's blessing on, upon him. <clears throat> so Allah is conferring blessing when? All the time. From when? Allah knows. Conclusion, Allah Ta'ala did not simply reveal the Quran to us. He also sent an exemplar, a model, who showed us how to follow the Quran. He was like a moving Quran. We would not be able to follow many of the injunctions of the Quran without Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showing us how to follow. We have been created solely for Allah Ta'ala's worship. The only way we the worldly people can do that is by obeying Allah's commands as his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam followed and his actions in his daily life as inspired by Allah Ta'ala. However, we have the option to worship Allah or not to. We can wholeheartedly pursue dunya and disregard Allah and his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have the option. We have the option to worship him or not to worship him. And, his, uh, and, and follow his uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But for how long can we avail that option? The option is for a limited period, as long as we are alive. The problem with people of the world is we are motivated to pursue worldly ambitions. As soon as we get some understanding, uh, be a doctor, be an engineer, be army officer, and so on and so forth. To the utter exclusion of the need to prepare at the same time for hisab accountability in the hereafter. Pursue dunya. And we are not told that we also have to, we also have to prepare for accountability that lies ahead. And the only way we can prepare for the accountability is by emulating the examples of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once we are on worldly track, ambition, I have to be this. We lose sight of death and accountability after death. We start living in a world in which, as if the creator does not exist, what exists is creation. And hence, we can pursue our whims and desires. Shaitan and our nafsaniyat, our base desires, and the whisperings of people make us for forget the creator. You have to earn more dunya.
But then what happens suddenly for most people is that the finishing line arrives. Time for death. The curtain drops. Time is over. And the person then realizes about his hisab. And the utterly terrifying system put in place in the realm of Akhirat, where nothing of this world is of avail. The life of illusion and delusion, that is this world, comes to an end and the reality of the Akhirat appears. People realize they were under an utter illusion and delusion in this world. But once the curtain drops, there is no more time, no more going back, no more opportunity. Let us avail the one and only life and opportunity that we have been granted to establish relationship with the creator. That's the objective of this life. Earn whatever you need. We cannot pursue unending wants. It will never leave us in peace. There'll be never an end to pursuing wants. We earn what we need and spend the remaining time to establish relationship with the creator. And, and whatever we earn, we earn in the manner shown by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Honesty, truthfulness, with uh, humility, halal earnings, and uh, that will become worship. Please Allah, And it can only be established in the manner exemplified by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the only relationship that will, be, that will be of any help in this world. The relationship with Allah Ta'ala. There will be situations in our lives when nothing can be of help. No friend, no money, no power, no position. Such situation can arrive when nothing is of any avail. Only Allah at that point can help. Whether we are in the heights of the Himalayas or in the depths of the, of the Pacific Ocean, only Allah can help. And obviously, when we are in the Khabar and beyond the Hashar, when we have to cross the bridge, and when we have to avoid Jahannam and enter Jannah, it is only the relationship with Allah Ta'ala that can help. So we avail the option we want to obey Allah or not to follow the sunnah of his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or not to is our option. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, let me avail the opportunity to say a few words about uh, Captain Shamsul Zaman. Uh, before that, let me quote a narration, uh, a Sahih narration from Tirmidhi that came to us via Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, the son of Umar radiallahu anhu, who reported, mention what is good about your dead. Those who have passed away, mention good about them. That's going to benefit them. And refrain from speaking about their evil, their, their bad deeds. Master Mariner Captain ASM Shamsu Zaman is no more. He was born, as I gathered from uh, Nunki, his daughter, on March 3, 1954. And he passed away on August 27, 2022. A life of 68 years and about six months finished. 68 years and, and more than that, over. He had tumor in near his stomach for over two years. Sometimes he appeared to be cancer-free, but overall he progressively deteriorated. On Saturday around midday, he succumbed. I won't say too many things about him. And leave it to, to you, you folks who want to speak. And, and by the way, let me also mention that today happens to be a cricket match between Pakistan and India, T20, T20 
championship. So that will has affected, I, I, I guess. At least I know of one Orca member who couldn't attend because of that. So there could be other members who may have attended. Uh, the first thing I want to mention about him in terms of my personal experience is I possibly haven't come across a person with as much spirit as Shamsu Zaman. As his illness deteriorated over time, I did not see dampening of the spirit. And uh, it was unwavering. And uh, it occurred to me yesterday that he will continue to inspire me as long as I live or as long as I have my senses. And I want to tell Emma Zaman Munki that you should be proud of him. I, will, I would not be, as I feel, I will not be able to match his spirit. He, late last year, or early this year, he called me from his village home in Borguna, Barisal. And I wouldn't go through, it was a long talk. I wouldn't go through all the details, but basically what he said is he came, he went there to see his village home one last time, the places, uh, the place where he lived, he, where he grew up, the fields where he played, the ponds where he took bath. He was preparing. Over the last uh, more than two years, since he was diagnosed, we have talked now and then. And what I heard him say is, I had a wonderful life. I've seen the world. He was a master mariner. I've enjoyed life. I have got love from my employees and other people, obviously from Orca members, but from his employees, he was MD of C-Scan Services Limited. And uh, he implied that he's ready to leave. Have not earned wrongfully any money. All my earnings is halal. It seemed to me he was ready to meet his Lord, his creator. He was an indomitable spirit. And uh, there's something I should mention. Since he confided to me and he confided uh, because, uh, and I'm mentioning because it relates to Orca. I forgot, I, for, I forget the exact, exact time, but possibly around two years ago, maybe more more than that, maybe a little less than that. And he was sentimental in that call. And he simply spoke about that one thing again and again. And uh, my memory is failing me now. The exact things he told me. It had to do with his uh, helping Alka buy a property in Diabari. 26, 27 acre uh, Katha property. He was instrumental in that. His brother Tuhin, who is supposed to be here, was also instrumental in that. We also have to remember the contribution, the unyielding contribution of uh, engineer Siddhu Rahman. So without these individuals, uh, we could not have purchased that property. So he, what he basically told me is, and I won't go into details, for the sake of time. Uh, his hand was up. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Uh, we'll come to that. 
Um, Mahbub has a question from 15 batch. Uh, what he basically told me is that I'm confiding in you, meaning in me. I have not done anything that some brothers are saying about me in terms of the property. I've not done any of those. But if anybody is here who has any misgiving about him and about his role, please know that. I would believe everything that he said. We should be thankful to him and to Tuhin and to Siddiqur Rahman and all those who played a role. He used to call me now and then and uh, offered advice as to what we should do in that property or what we should do in terms of the property. So those are my words about Shamsu Zaman. And now I will uh, open the floor, but after uh, two things. Number one, uh, giving some advice to Emma Zaman and uh, the relatives of uh, Shamsu Zaman. It will not take much time. Uh, he's gone and you cannot serve him as you used to serve him. And you might feel, oh, the opportunity is over. But Allah is most kind and most merciful. You can actually serve him more. Emma Zaman uh, Nunki lives in UK. So he could, she could not take care of Shamsu Zaman as she would have liked to. But now you can take care of him every moment, take care of his needs every moment. People in, 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 in the life of Barzak, called alam -e barzak life of the grave, they have their needs. As we have needs in the womb of the mother, we have needs in dunya, they have needs. That, that need is of a different type. And that need is fulfilled by Allah Ta'ala through the prayers that we will now send for them, our near and dear ones. Any moment we do any good deed, we pray to Allah Ta'ala, whether we are in, in, in voodoo, purity or not, whether we raise our hands or not, we can pray to Allah Ta'ala. And it will cause the angels to send to convey blessings to him right away with your name uttered and they will pray for you. All our near and dear ones who have passed away. So there is one thing we can do. The more we do, the more we serve them and the more uh, they can meet their needs of, of cover. The second thing is we make Sadka Jariya the reward of which will continue to benefit people. And as long as it continues to benefit people, it will benefit them. Sadkaya Jariya. Continual uh, charity. The third thing is try to fulfill their wasiya. And by the way, it's not uh, just for Shamsu Zaman, it's for all our near and dear ones. We can do these same things. Pray, uh, uh, Sadkaya Jariya. And then the third thing is uh, Fulfill their wasiya. They wanted to, they had some wishes and desires they could not fulfill in terms of helping people uh, fulfill those or other, other things that they wanted to do to benefit people. Fulfill those. Number three. Number four, take care of those people that they used to associate with. It's, it's a great act of, of virtue. Take care of those people that they used to associate with. It's not talking about relatives. I'll come to relatives number fifth. So number four, take care of people, his friends uh, that he used to associate with, or even his subordinates that he used to take care of. And number five is his relatives. Take care of his relatives. Uh, concern for his relatives who are your relatives also. So five things, pray for them. Sadka Jariya, fulfill his wishes. Wasiya, number four, take care of people he associated with. Number five, take care of his relatives. 
we all can do for all our near and dear ones. And I want to uh, read a, a, a message from Sayyid Shamsu, uh, Shay, uh, Sayyidu Zaman Shuja, Sayyidu Zaman Chaudhri Shuja. He's one of the pillars from 11 batch. I know him because he, he worked with me in 1981 and onwards. Orka. So he, he knows what he's talking about. He's talking about Zaman in light of Orka. And I'll read. Zaman Bhai, Pray Dui Bachor Jabot Oshusto Chilen, Unar Chotovai Tuhiner Madhome, Unar Sharik Obostar Coach, Hobor Nitam. Unisho Atanoboy Shoner Reunion, Unar Shati Amar Purichai Hoi. I met him at the time of 1998 reunion. We have one, one uh, person who doesn't understand Bengali. Uktor reunion, Uni Orkar Vice President Nirvachit Ohan. He was elected Vice President in that reunion, 1998. And you know, prior to that, he was in ships, one ship after another. 2007-2008, in that year, I can as well translate to English. Uh, in that year, uh, he helped in the purchase of Orca land that I mentioned, 2007, uh, during the uh, uh, calamity in Bangladesh, 2007-2008, known as cyclone, known as Siddur. Uh, the, the Barisal area was uh, terribly affected and he helped us, meaning Orca, in reaching uh, uh, relief to the people there, in distributing a lot of uh, relief materials. Today, he's, uh, he is not amongst us. He has left us. May Allah Ta'ala grant him Jannatul Firdos. <laughs> that is from uh, Ruja, very nice of him. And uh, yes, I turn it I turn it over to Aminul Karim. I mean, yes. uh, uh, if you want to uh, start, um, we, we want to know for, about Zaman from you first and foremost. And then there is Anwar from Fort Batch, credit number 147. And then if Emma Zaman wants to speak, uh, it, uh, I leave it to her. In this condition, I, I'm, I'm not sure how she is, but she responded to my messages right away. She responded right away to my messages. Okay, I mean, I mean, he's in a call, so we give him a little few moments. Is it Hamid? Uh, yes, uh, over to you. No, no, I've been listening. Yeah. Recalling uh, Captain have, uh, Anwar, you want to say something? Anwar? Unmute Koro. Asha, I'm going to say something about Bangla. I'm going to say something about Bangla. Anwar, if you want to say something about Jaman. To me, unmute Koro again. Please unmute. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Actually, I'm totally heartbroken. He was a very close friend. I'm a roommate I mean, one memories, one kitchen. Good person, Allah Taala. A good banda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Allahumma Amen. Amen. Then I'll speak and then I'll give the floor to uh, Nunki after that. Is there anybody else? Uh, about, uh, Saying something about uh, our class friend uh, Samsud Jaman. Okay, let me say something about him. Like Anwar and myself, we are the classmates, best mates, and we're in the same Kasim house. For, I was there for one year and then I moved to Khalid house. But uh, Samsud Jaman continued to remain. I can say one of the closest friends of mine. Even uh, when I joined the army in Chittagong, I was there in Chittagong uh, near the port, 
we used to often visit Chittagong and we used to often meet in those young days. We just got married. I just got married and uh, he also got married. And Nunki was not then uh, born by that time. So we had a lovely time, Chittagong. And he used to bring a lot of fruits and, you know, you name anything, you ask anything. He had a big heart, person with a very big heart. And he used to often uh, entertain his friends and relatives and his acquaintances to his uh, home in his rooftop for sumptuous dinner or lunch. And you go and you go to his house and you get a lot, all kinds of food. Uh, I understand three things. I mean, I'm, I'm the kombuji, but whatever, I little, little I understand. Three th blessings that come to you from Allah is when it is, it is, uh, there's a rain, rainfall. When he was buried, there was, uh, there was rain in, the, in that site. Hmm. And you have a daughter in your house, and you have uh, the guest in your house, and you entertain them with full satisfaction. The three things means that Allah is happy with you. The blessing. Well, this is how what this is how I learned it. And he had that big heart. He would slaughter a cow and a cattle and you know you name anything. He would go all out. And he was so friendly and he used to keep contact with everybody. He would talk to me every week at least once, not not only once or more than that. And we used to often meet. I was in Malaysia, but from there we used to talk almost regularly. Muhammad Vaisati used to maintain continuous relationship. And he did a lot for worker. He did a, did a lot for worker. He, 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 he would not, you know, divulge all those things publicly, but in their body, he gave his heart and soul. Worker must have put something very good, tangible at their body. Well, uh, and I know he could spend money with two hands just like that, and he used to earn a lot of money, and it was all business. Money, he profit that he earned from his business. He had some difficulties in life because uh, he had a factory which got burnt during that uh, political disturbance. He made some loss, but he, he picked it up, he made it up. And uh, he, his daughter, uh, first daughter, Emma, first child, Emma Nunki, is, is an accomplished scholar who studied in Cambridge and Oxford. And she's very well gifted. And she took special care staying at London. She could feel from London, because she also studied math, uh, medicine, probably. She could feel from London that something is wrong going on in Dhaka uh, Hospital. So then he came down, she came down to Dhaka and he decided he should move to Mumbai. And Mumbai people uh, did the surgery, main surgery, actually. Samsu Javan was very, very close to me. And uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, last year, he invited all his friends to visit his uh, home, home village, his ponds, where, as Hamid Bhai said, where he should swim, his rivers, his houses, his schools, and all those. I could not make it because at that time, my eldest sister was in the dead bed, and I had to move to Chapano and she died about a year back or so. I missed that very badly. And he, he, he requested me so many, many times. That, I mean, you must go during my lifetime and go and see my places where I, where I played, where I lived, and where I sw swam, and where I studied. So he, he had, you know, uh, he was talking all that from heart. And Allah listens to the heart. I'm sure he will be. I pray, I cannot be sure. I pray to Allah, Allah, give him the best place in the Jannatul Prayer for those near, near our prophet, prophet. We as mm. human beings, we make a lot of mistakes, fine. But Allah says, you make mistakes up to mountains, up to, up to the next heaven. But I'll, I'll forgive you, you ask for it, I'll forgive you. And now it is the turn for us, especially for Nunki and uh, your, uh, your uh, brother, three brothers. And, uh, and, and I talked to uh, Lady Jaman this morning. She was, supposed, she was supposed to join, but from Barishal, there's a problem connecting uh, inter internet. The electricity is fluctuating. I gave her the link. I talked to her. She's in good sense, fine. 
I say, have patience. I told her, have patience. Because she has a long life to go. Uh, uh, one son is em employed already. The other son, son is in class 10. And the other son is handicapped. Please pray for him. So this lady has to take care of these three brothers and also Nunki and the properties and all those things. It's a tough job in Dhaka city and in Bangladesh. So many fraudulent people are around. They can flinch you. They can kill you. They can murder you. Inshallah, we'll try to help her, keep, keep in touch with her. And we, as our classmates, we are many of us. And many of our classmates helped him a lot in the hospital, like, uh, like Rubel, you know, or cadet uh, Asan Habib, Saiful, Ulfat, Mijan. They have been visiting him regularly in the hospital. They were near to the hospital. And uh, he was very sure that he's going to die. Last 10 days, he was more, more or less sure that he's going to die. But he expressed that. It was terrible because he went unconscious. His food is to go through the nasal uh, pipe system. And uh, he died just like that. Last to last night, when I was offering my Esa prayer, I realized that I'm going to offer uh, his Janaja tomorrow in, in Uttara. And in the yesterday, for, before the Fajr Namaz, I thought that today I have to offer my janaza for Jaman in Uttara. But then his dead body was taken right from the uh, hospital to Borishal. I missed that, but then I prayed for him. But it came to my mind that he's, I'm going to attend his janaza today. Uh, it, it means yesterday. He was buried at uh, 10 p.m. in his village home when it was raining, uh, I would say, uh, heavily. And they reached at around nine in, the, in that village. A lot of people thronged the area. Hundreds of people of the village thronged the area. And I'm sure their prayer will not go in, in vain. Allah is the most merciful. Allah is the most merciful. And Allah will ask the angels, what are the people talking about Jaman when they take their roof to Allah? This is the people are talking so high about him. His, his villages. His village. They are very simple people. They are very, very simple people. They are not complicated people like us who live in the city. Allah will, inshallah, grant their prayers. And I, from my side, I say that uh, he will rest in peace in the heavens, in the Jannatul Fadr. So with that, I finish. Uh, anybody else, if not uh, there, then uh, Nunki, you can take over. Uh, uh, speak in your normal language and... Uh, you can speak either in English or in Bangla. Everything is okay. You, I know you are in emotion, but I can assure you, we, you are, your uncles are praying. See, so many uncles are praying for him. But your prayer is most important. In the Quran, it is written, the prayer of the children will be reached to the Allah directly. It is, it is written in the Holy Quran. There is no shortcut to that. So your prayer, your brother's prayer are most important. That's what I feel it. Well, our prayers are most important, but your prayer is most important. See, Anunti, you can start if you want to. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Amin. Uncle. Um, yeah, thank you, Amin Uncle. Our uh, um, Amin Uncle that I organized for Juno could be um, thanks. Um, I know that Amin Uncle up me um, on a close chillen and and all of that. So, I mean, he was very fond of this um, Orkar, Diabari project, he, was, he had a vision about that, and he cherished this brotherhood, Orkar, all his life. Like, Abu identity is integrated in, in, you know, in, in Cadet College, more so, I would say, than, than Mariner. Uh, so it, I, you know, it means a lot um, the you're talking about, but, you know, undoubtedly, I think he knew the you will be, you know, we will be talking about him or you will be talking about him. The, he had that confidence in that brotherhood. So, you know, I am, I am um, grateful and I feel humble that um, Apnara, you know, you spoke so highly of him and you are you know concerned and praying for him um 
as for me, all I can say for my dad's last, well, not last wish, I would say lifetime wish. Abu was a person who would connect people to other people. And I am a bit like him in that. I am good at keeping connections. And I don't, you know, I don't say bye to them or I just make sure that so I mean, uncle Lee I'm not jealous of the Devon Kotaho, Joga Jograk, the Bulletsi. A Buritza Tiloje, Arigino Budaya, or Pitana, me actor, me a bur, um, actor friend, I think, Uni lawyer. To Ericum Jadi, Chilepele, Jara, Atse, London, Babaire, Kuru Rokume, Joga Jog, Baraktai, Shitat Judi Rakia Mashate, Shita Bahalulakbe. Next generation is Shate Shobar. I think Ojunu Abu Orca project are on like important Monohoto because he thought that it's not just about um, them, it's about the families to stay connected in the long run as well. So, yeah, if I can do that or I can, you know, help in any way to, you know, uh, put his vision forward, then I'd be more than happy to help. And obviously, as you said, Jay, he has got sons. They are significantly younger than me. So um, I am obviously more mature and borrow. So shetate kore jodi abur aborto mane kono kichute kono help lage kono dino korte pari. I'll be very grateful, you know, if that's the case. Uh, I my thoughts go like to scattered. So I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense, but I mean, all I can say is, you know, thank you very much, and it's pretty bewildering to see. Um, at the strong association, shop batter, manush there, and shabashat shabar, at the meal and at the care, at the boys por And you know, I don't think that's something our the generation can cherish. So you know, it's it's just wonderful and amazing and humbling to see you know how much you all care. So I think it I am me bulbo. I think I'm a chacha. To him chacha will probably. You know anything edge you can help put the pare or anything he is associated with a lot of you um then please like let my dad not be you know he's not amongst us but i'm sure there will be people he'll be out there you know to contribute as well so it i thank you very much you. Uh, I, uh, I'm gonna, I just Emma, i can i give you just little advice Please, Please take care of your younger brothers. Yes. Uh, it is a responsibility. Yes, Abu, 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 I'm not doing uh, See, this is such a good uh, host of so many friends of Samsung Jaman are praying for him. And it is, I am sure our post, our classmates all are praying for him, all five times. Our classmates and many more and many, many more. Okay. How is that? It's not. What is that? Zaman, okay. Last call, the Silo, Taman Hai, Akma Shage. Four weeks or six weeks, I was shouting one of Porchana. And he was in high spirit. And then, or Bablanjo or Abusta Balavan, I mean, I called Nakuri, I mean, message Patata. To Kalkami declam the Choita messenger or replied it to Baranai. Among Emar Kastikami Jan Lam, they go to Akmarsh or Janukubi Kostu Gorchilo. I can very well understand he could not even check my messages. I knew that. I, but I didn't also. <coughs> I didn't also want to <coughs> bother him with the call. I mean, Allah knows for how long. ভালোবাসা <laughs> Always book to Shabash at the Joga Jograph. So Jadaja the Tiddy, Jadaja Parish, Shitatu Ragbo, 
আর ওই তো যেটা বললাম যে আমার সাথে অবশ্যই যোগাযোগ রাখবেন যদি আসেন এদিকে দেখা হবে আমেরিকা গেলেও জানাবো নিশ্চয়ই যেহেতু একবার এটা একটু মিসডায়গনোস ছিল আমি গিয়ে But when he left me, he kept on looking at me for solutions. He kept on looking at me for solutions. He said, somehow I'm going to save the day. So, partially, what I wanted to know was harder. And it was a lot harder even. Like, I mean, I just didn't know what I was going to do. So, I just basically missed for a day. But it was very hard. Like, last especially, I mean, 10 days, 15 days, it was very hard for me. So she said that he was just suffering and, you know, Eta, in a sense, it's, it's good for him now. He's at, you know, he's resting, hopefully. I'm going to talk to you, Hamid. Yes, please. I'm going to PhD in 1998, November. So I'm going to talk to you, 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 ঋণের সময় চ্যাংদোলা করে কেউ ট্রেজারের দায়িত্ব নিত না তখন আমাকে দেওয়া হতো আমি কিন্তু কয়েকটা মানে ট্রেজার ছিলাম তো ওই তারপরে আমার হয়তো অর্কার প্রতি একটা আলাদা মানে শ্রদ্ধা ভালোবাসা আন্তরিকতা ছিল আর ঢাকা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে শিক্ষকতা করার কারণে তো ক্যাম্পাসে বাসা থাকার কারণে অর্কা ওই যে টু ফিফটি রোড অনেক কাছে ছিল দ্যাট ওয়াজ এ বিগ পয়েন্ট কেন আমি কন্টিনিউসলি ট্রেজারার হতাম কারণ আমি এভরি থার্সডে অর্কা অফিসে যেতাম একদম মানে আমি রেগুলার ভিজিটর ছিলাম অর্কার ওই যে বৃহস্পতিবার করে যে আমাদের আমি হয়তো এটা আমার অ্যাডভান্টেজ ছিল যে আমি এখান থেকে হেঁটে চলে আমি তো নীলক্ষেতের মোড়ের কোয়ার্টারে ছিলাম নীলক্ষেতের মোড় থেকে অর্কা অফিস হেঁটে যেতে লাগে সাত থেকে আট মিনিট মাত্র এটা একটা বিগ অপরচুনিটি তাই না ঢাকা শহরে তো থার্সডে ছাড়াও ট্রেজারার হিসাবে কাজ করার জন্য মোক্তারকে নিয়ে বিভিন্ন সময় তখন তার আমাদের অফিস সাপোর্ট ছিল না কম্পিউটার ছিল না এগুলো সফটওয়্যার ছিল না ম্যানুয়ালি সেই রেজিস্টারে কাজ করতে হতো রেজিস্টারের মধ্যে লিখে লিখে আর আমি তো বিজনেস এর স্টুডেন্ট না যার ফলে আর একটু কষ্ট হতো এনি বাট আই এনজয়েড হ্যাঁ যে ওয়ার্কার জন্য কাজ করতে গিয়ে তো আমি যেটা বলতে যাচ্ছিলাম যেহেতু আমি এভরি থার্সডে আমি যেতামই মানে আই ওয়াজ দা মোস্ট মানে কমন ইসি মেম্বার যে অর্কা ওই থার্সডে তে যাইতো কেউ না কেউ ইনভেরিয়েবলি মিস করতো কিন্তু আমারটা মিস হতো না বললেই চলে তো সেই কারণে যে অর্কা অফিসে থার্সডে তে যে কেউ যদি ভিজিট করতো আগন্তুক যেহেতু আমি মিস করতাম না এই জন্য আমার সাথে কিন্তু দেখা হয়ে যেত সবারই তো তো জামান ভাই কিন্তু ওই সুবাদে জামান ভাইয়ের সাথে আমার বেশ কয়েকবার অর্কা অফিসে দেখা হয়েছে এবং আমি যতটুকু দেখেছি যে জামান ভাই মানে অনেক বড় মনের মানুষ বিশেষ করে ওই সময় সত্যি কথা বলতে কি এখন তো খাবার দাবার ফাস্ট ফুড এগুলো খেয়ে খেয়ে সবাই কিন্তু অভ্যস্ত হয়ে গেছে কিন্তু একটা সময় ছিল যখন আসলে মুড়ি চানাচুর বা ওই যে সামনের দোকানের পুরীর বাইরে ডাল পুরি বা আলু পুরির বাইরে যদি একটু কোনো ভালো খাবার মিষ্টি বা আরেকটু ভালো তখন কিন্তু পিজা টিজা এগুলো এই যে এগুলো অর্ডার টর্ডার এগুলো দিয়ে দোকান ছিল না তারপরেও একটু ভালো স্ন্যাক্স কিছু একটা যদি কেউ কেউ অফার করত সবাই কিন্তু খুব খুশি হইতো এই যে জুনিয়র ব্রাদাররা বিশেষ করে যারা স্টুডেন্ট সত্যি বলতেছি হ্যাঁ তো এই জামান ভাই আসলে অর্কা অফিসে উনি কিন্তু সবাইকে কিন্তু পকেট থেকে পয়সা বের করে দিয়ে খাওয়াইতেন খাওয়াইতেন এবং এই যে অর্কা অফিসে যে ছোট ভাইরা স্পেশাল কিছু খাওয়াইতেন আদার দানে সে আমাদের টিপিক্যাল মুদি চারা চুরার পুরীর বাইরে এটা আমার মনে আছে মনে পড়ে যে জিনিসটা উনি করতেন এবং এমন ভাবে করতেন মনে হয় যেন কি বলবো আমাদের তো লজ্জা লাগতই না এমন ভাবে উনি করতেন মনে হয় যেন আমার আপন বড় ভাই খুব আদর করে স্নেহ করে অনেক দিন পরে আসছে আমার জন্য খাবার নিয়ে ঠিক এই রকমের একটা অনুভূতি নিয়ে উনি অফার করতেন আমরা কিন্তু কোনো প্রকারের লজ্জা সংকোচ তো নয় 
সামটাইমস উনি ধরেন কিছু খাওয়াতে চাইলেন এর সাথে যে মুক্তার যখন কিনতে যাচ্ছে তখন কেউ একেবারে সরল মনে অধিকার নিয়ে বলতে এই মুক্তার এটার সাথে এইটাও নিয়ে আসো বাড়তি এবং কারণ ওই জামান ভাই অনেক কিছু বুঝতেন না মেনু উনি বাইরে থাকার কারণে বা আমাদের এখানে কি পাওয়া যায় সবাই নিজের মতো করে মেনু অ্যাড করে দিত দিয়ে সেগুলো আবার মুক্তার কিনে নিয়ে আসতো তো এছাড়া অরকার যে সমস্ত বিষয় আসে ওইগুলো আছে অরকার ডেভেলপমেন্ট বুঝা যেত যে রিয়ালি মানে তার যে অর্কার প্রতি ফিলিংস ছিল সত্যি এই অনেক বেশি এবং আমার যেটা মনে হয় আমি ফিফটিন ব্যাচ ওনারা তো অনেক সিনিয়র আমার কেমন যেন মনে হয় গড়ে যারা সিনিয়র ব্রাদার্স অর্কাতে যত পুরনো ভাইরা তত দেখেছি আমার আমার ডোন্ট টেক ইট আদারওয়াইজ জুনিয়র ব্রাদার্স মানে আমার অবজারভেশন যে যত সিনিয়র ব্রাদার যত গড়ে মানে দু একজন এক্সেপশন থাকতে পারে অ্যাভারেজ আমি আমার যেটা মনে হয় আমার ইভালুয়েশন যত সিনিয়র ভাইরা আছেন তারা ওয়ার্কারকে বেশি ভালোবাসেন আমাদের থেকে দেন জুনিয়র ব্রাদার্স এটা আমার অবজারভেশন এবং সেই 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 কারণেও ওনার যে ফিলিংস আমি এনরমাস ফিলিংস দেখেছি তো উনি অনেক কাজও করেছেন উনি অনেক চ্যারিটি করেছেন জামানের বই নুনকি একটি তারার নাম তার মাধ্যমে নুনকি নামটা পরিচিত থাকবে বাংলাদেশে ভুলতে পারত না আমার আমি একটা একটু কথা বলে নি আপনি ফলে যখন আসলে কথা যখন টু থাউজেন্ড থ্রি তে আই ওয়াজ আই ওয়েন্ট টু লন্ডন অন এন অফিসিয়াল ভিজিট লিডিং এ মিলিটারি ডেলিগেশন তো তখন জামান আমি তো প্রোটোকল প্রোটোকলের বাইরে তো তো আমি ওই কর্ণ রিকোয়েস্ট করলাম যে আমাকে একটু এই ঠিকানায় আমাকে একটু নিতে হবে আমার একটা আমার মেয়েকে দেখতে যাবো আমি আর জামান বলছে একটু দেখে আসিস এসে আমাকে বলিস নুন কি তোমার মনে আছে আমি তোমাকে দেখতে গেলাম জি আঙ্কেল ক্লিয়ারলি মনে আছে আমি তাকে দেখলাম বললাম তোমার বাবা কাঁদতেছে তোমার জন্য প্লিজ টক টু হিম রেগুলারলি মানে ও একদম বাচ্চা মেয়ে কাঁদতেছিল যখন আমি যখন আমাকে যখন বলতেছিল যে তুই আমার মেয়েটাকে একটু দেখে আসিস একদম হিউজ ক্রাইম লাইক এ চাইল্ড অ্যান্ড ইট মুভ মাই হার্ট অ্যান্ড in spite of despite my all schedules and preoccupations and dinner and this and that and visits and briefing and this and that i may i could make some time and go and see her for some time and then i came back and reported to him yes your your daughter is fine she's been good she's very strong and she's very determined to do anything possible and she's as determined as you are don't worry to theek ache alhamdulillah amra dua kori ei ar ki don't ki all the best তুমি তোমার বড় ছোট ভাইদের একটা দেখাশোনা করো এটা আমি তোমাকে রিকোয়েস্ট করলাম এন্ড স্টে ইন হারমনি উইথ ইউর মা উইথ ইউর মাদার উইথ ইউর ব্রাদার্স উইথ ইউর উইথ ইউর চাচা উইথ ইউর দাদা এন্ড অল দোজ তোমার দাদা কিন্তু অনেক বড় মানুষের মাপের লোক ওনার অনেক হসপিটাল আছে দেখাশোনা করে সো এন্ড গো এন্ড ভিজিট হিজ গ্রেভ সাম টাইম ইন দ্য ভিলেজ দ্য মোমেন্ট ইউ গেট সাম আই নো ইউ উইল ডু দ্যাট আই এম শিওর আই ডোন্ট হ্যাভ টু টেল ইউ the he she he is your father that's it that's most important alhamdulillah assalam alaikum ji assalam ko 2003 er ghotona bolla you are now 20 years you were 20 years younger i'm not saying you are 20 years older i'm saying you are 20 <laughs> years younger that time <laughs> no, i was i was sick i was 15 or 16 at the time i'm clearly mona uncle mane gari tagi ne Ashe, it was like a bit of a scene in in the you know dodgy little place <laughs> was seeing the ato gari tari ni uncle astrilo yeah i mean tokhon i didn't finish school even so yeah, i yeah. didn't i didn't have any idea where life was going but mm. i just had some kind of focus but again like i think a lot of strangers helped me on yete wete and i think 
my way of paying back is never forgetting. And, um, you know, gratitude is something really important to me. So mm. it never goes to my head, Cambridge, Oxford, whatever it is, it does not go to my head. And I think, you know, people can get things and people can lose things all at the mm. same time. Mm. So oi, gratitude and gratefulness, the practice na kotta palle, I don't think life is shanti power there. Uh, so after hearing uh, for the last few minutes, uh, the difficulties and trials and tribulations, hard times that you went through, there's a there's a uh, uh, encouraging there's a good side to it, which is I think you are a much more matured person, stronger person, more strong-willed person through by going through those difficulties, then you would be otherwise. If you were cloistered and always kept uh, in protection, you wouldn't be such a strong and uh, mature person that we find you after uh, how many hours? 36 hours after the, the passing away of your father. So I, I'm sure I'm sure everything turned out well, and I'm sure everything will go on well, and I'm sure you can continue to serve him through your prayers and uh, whatever else you can do for him. So just that Indeed. observation, it, it, has, it has benefited you in many ways that you may not uh, realize or recognize right away. Amir Hussain is seriously ill. Pray for him. He couldn't attend. Wife of Brigadier Saeed breathed her last in the last half an hour. We worked together in the army headquarters. This is uh, General Aminul Karim. So we pray that the lady gets the best treatment from Allah Ta'ala in cover and in the st stages of life to follow and grant her Jannah to serve those. We uh, gather today to also Pray for the departed soul of Master Mariner Captain ASM Shamsu Zaman, Fort Batch, Cadet Number 171, who passed away on Saturday in Bangladesh around midday. And in that, on that day, in 24 hours, as in every other day, 150,000 to 160,000 people died. But that doesn't matter to us because they were not one of us. Captain Zaman was one of us and he continues to be one of us. We'll talk about his life and achievements later after Doha. And uh, anybody who wants to take part can take part. We are fortunate to have the hands of his daughter, Emma Zaman Nunki, with us. She will raise her hands as we. As we pray. So we have that benefit. Every death is a reminder for us that we have to go. But the world is such a deceiver, an attractor, and captivator that it makes us oblivious of the fact that life is like an ice cube in boiling water. Life is like a candle against the wind. Life is like an autumn leaf, gachir pata, that can fall anytime. Who is a wise person? Not the one who has earned more of money and wealth and position and power and fame 
these are foolish people who spend entire, their entire time in earning dunya, something of dunya, at the total disregard of accountability in the hereafter. These are fools because they can't carry any of what they have earned. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us definition of a wise person. They are the ones who remember death more than others and prepares for death more than others. As per one narration. Continually remember death and continually prepare, prepare for death. Because, you know, the most uncertain, the most certain event of life is death. The most uncertain is the timing of death. Since it is so uncertain, it follows that the wise person is one who remembers that it is uncertain. It will come, but it is uncertain. And he is always prepared for death. He welcomes death. He welcomes the angel of death. I've been waiting for you. I want to meet my Lord. He has no qualms. He has no uh, sadness about leaving dunya. And that is the spirit that I saw, that I found in Captain Shamsu Zaman. I'll talk about that. I'll, right after dua, I will take a few minutes and then I will read out something that uh, uh, Shuja, who is supposed to be here today, he doesn't want to speak. He, he sent me his written version. I will read that out in Bengali. And then we will, uh, I'll leave the floor to anybody who wants to speak. So for the um, wife of Brigadier Saeed, that uh, Lieutenant General Amil Karim mentions, who passed away, uh, the wife, and uh, or Captain Shamsu Zaman, and for, and Allah is so kind and merciful. But whatever act we perform right now, in listening to his words and words of his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in, in talking about him and about his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tremendous reward. You cannot even imagine how much reward collectively Allah Ta'ala may grant us. We will uh, obviously request Allah Ta'ala to send the blessings to not only Captain Shamsu Zaman, to every one of our deceased ones, our near and dear ones. I also request for some additional virtues to be sent to them, which is Surah Fatiha once, and Surah Ikhlas three times, and then we will pray. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ar rahmanir rahim, maliki yawmid deen, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim. غير المطوب عليهم ولا التوانين لا رحمن رحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد and and that is worth in the esteem of Allah Taala uh, virtue equal to more than one ختم of the Quran اللهم آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد جزا الله عنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو we also pray by the way I also mention about uh, uh, some brothers who are afflicted uh, Farooq Amin Amir Hussain Mas Mrs Masbura Ayub and uh, after this I want I used to mention Captain Shamsul Zaman's name uh, Abul Barkat Mahfuz Reza his wife actually both battling cancer. And uh, Abdul Rauf, Nur Alam Siddiqui, uh, Romel, Saif's father in law, Jahangir, 24th batch, whose uh, you know, transplant is over. May Allah grant him complete recovery. 
Amirul Faisal from 19 batch, Mustafiz Nobel, another cancer, cancer patient, uh, he, after his treatment, um, uh, the, 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 the tumor had vanished. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala keep him healthy. Cornel Aftab's wife, another cancer patient, Aftab from 14th batch, and uh, there are brothers from uh, 15th batch in uh, difficulty, especially Amirul and others. Farooq, Abir's father, Mr. Muhammad Ali Reza undergoing dialysis. Masoom underwent surgery, came out successful. May Allah Ta'ala, I mean, may the biopsy turn out negative. Habib, ninth batch, tumor was taken from his right gland. Uh, may the biopsy turn out negative. Sobhan, he underwent sir, uh, treatment recently in New Delhi. May Allah Ta'ala grant him complete recovery. Wahid underwent surgery. May Allah Ta'ala grant him complete recovery. Zakir requested for our duas. Zakir from 20th batch. He's, he's not in good health. Shopnil from 51st batch, undergoing cancer treatment. Jangi from Mirzapur Cadet College, my contemporary, uh, actually first batch from Mirzapur Cadet College. Engineer Kabir from Fozdarhat Cadet College, 22nd batch. I don't know how his condition is. Uh, Maksud from Fozdar Art Credit College mentioned, uh, and I request if Maksud is here to give us an update when he can. So we pray that Allah Ta'ala may grant uh, recovery, speedy recovery and health and happiness to them and to all of us. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Subhanallah al azim wa bihamdihi wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al al azim Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqi wa reza nafsi wa zinata arshi wa midada kalimatihi la ilaha illallah al halim al karim Subhanallah rabbil arshi al azim wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen asaluka mujibati rahmatika wa zaima makfiratika wa ghanimata min kulli birri wa salamata min kulli ism la tadalana zabban illa ghafartahu wa la Haman illa farashta hu wala marizan illa shipaita hu wala dainan illa kazaita hu wala mujahidan illa nasarta hu wala masnuman illa nasarta hu wala musliman illa rahimta hu wala hajatan hiya laka rizan illa kazaita hu ya rahman rahimeen, ya rahman rahimeen, ya rahman rahimeen. Rabbana la tuwa khizna in nasina au akhtana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamalta hu ala alladhina min kablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqadala nabi wa afuanna wa agfir lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala alqawmil kafirin. Allahumma asaluka min khayre masalaka min hun nabiyuka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa nauzubika min sharri masta zaka min hun nabiyuka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anta al-mustaan wa lika al-balag wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. Allahumma gfir li wa li walidana wa jameel muhminin wa al-muhminat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Allahiyai min hun wa l-amlaat inna ka mujibu al-dawad bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatu wa fi al-akhirati hasanatu wa kina azab al-nar wa kina azab al-kabar wa kina azab al-hashar wa kina azab al-mizan wa kina azab al-tulsirat wa kina azab al-masyid dajjal. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurata ayuni wa jalna lil muttakina imama rabbi jalni mukima salati wa min zuriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Wallah, ya parwardigar. يا فاتر السماوات والارض يا ذو الجلال والاكرام يا عزيز الجبار المتكبر يا خالق الباري المصبر يا مالك الملك والله we forgive all our sins allah well are done openly or secretly major or minor والله we forgive our sins in lieu of our sins you write virtue you you command the angels to write virtue for us allah well, and all the moments of life that we passed without doing any virtue or any evil in lieu of those moments, Allah, you grant us virtue, Allah. 
and give us the tawfiq to remember you every moment of our future lives, to understand our obligation towards you, increase our iman to un and, un and make us understand our obligation towards you and our obligation towards fellow human beings and to discharge our obligations in the manner that can please you and to discharge and to do all our acts as per your commandment in the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with true iman in our heart and with the intention to please you and to only please you, Allah. Accept us, Allah. Without your acceptance, we are nowhere. We can do nothing, Allah. We are weaklings. We are sinners. We are beggars. You are the Almighty. You are the powerful. You are capable of doing everything. Inna ka ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah, you can fulfill all our needs, Allah. Well, uh, whatever we have heard today, Allah, give us the understanding <coughs> that emancipation lies in obeying you in the manner shown by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your pleasure. Well, uh, give us the comprehension and whatever mistakes we have made, forgive those mistakes, overlook those shortcomings accept them and convey the blessings to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and convey the blessings to ASM Shamsu Zaman, who is under your kind and considerate, most compassionate care and to the wife of Brigadier General Saeed and to all our near and dear ones, our parents, our grandparents, if any of our children is in grave, our in-laws and all our relatives and to all Muslims, in fact, all Muslims, you are so kind and so merciful. Wallah. We bear witness that Captain Shamsu Zaman was a kind and considerate soul, was a just soul, was a, was a wonderful human being. Well, uh, you show him your best behavior. And to all our near dear, dear ones, you show your best behavior in their next stage of life and in all the stages of life to come. Well, uh, you forgive their punishment in the grave. Well, uh, you expand their grave. Oh Allah, you fill their grave with noor. Oh Allah, you make their grave a garden of paradise. Oh Allah, you increase their status every day. Oh Allah, you raise them with high standing on the day of judgment underneath your arsh. Keep them worry free and make their hisab easy and give their book of deeds in their right hands, Allah. Oh Allah. You, you enable them to cross the bridge of Sirat with the, with, with the wink of an eye. And you enable them to enter Jannatul Firdos. And oh Allah, you, you grant us such a life, life of obedience to you in the manner shown by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for your pleasure, may our life be for your pleasure and our death be for your pleasure, such that we can also get your best treatment, your best behavior in cover and in, on the day of judgment and in crossing the bridge and in entering Jannah to Firdos. Wallah, we pray that you may grant mercy and blessings and guidance and protection to all our near and dear ones who have passed away 
are who are living well, uh, we accept all Muslims, grant them guidance, something they need the most, something we need the most. And you guide all mankind and you protect the progeny of ours and all Muslims and all mankind. Save them from the fire of Jahannam. If you make everybody enter Jahannam, it will not benefit you in any way. And if you put everybody in paradise, it will not take away anything from you. Allah, you grant Jannah to everybody. Allah, Allah we beseech you. That you take care of our needs of this dunya. We have so many needs in our hearts that we nurture and we, you protect us from difficulties and you grant us cure in our illnesses. You are the only one to fulfill our needs and to grant us protection and to grant us cure. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina zalimin. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna mina zalimin. Oh Allah, so many people in this world are in so many difficulties, Allah. You take care of their needs and you grant them relief from injustice and intolerance and hatred and torture at the hands of fellow human beings. You are the only one who, in the wink of an, in the blink of an eye, of an eyesight, can grant us relief. Wallah, you accept us. Allahumma inna ka afubun kareemun tuhibula fafafu anna. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam takfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. ربنا لا تزيد قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاد يا كازي الحاجات يا رافية الدرجات يا حلال المشكلات يا موجب الدعوات برحمتك نستغيث يا أول الأولين يا آخر الآخرين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا راحم المسكين يا ذي القوة المتين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتبو علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وحد لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أمين يا رب العالمين أمين يا رب العالمين أمين يا رب العالمين